Our probe is on the precipice, about to enter the gaping mouth of the black hole, the event horizon. Black holes have something called the event horizon, and it's the point at which there is no escape from the gravitational pull of the black hole. Once you cross the event horizon, it's similar to going over the edge of a waterfall. There's no return. If you look at this waterfall, you see it's sort of going flat, and then suddenly at the edge, water's falling steeply down. The edge of a black hole is sort of like that. At the event horizon, suddenly space begins to bend deeply in. Gravity pulls the water across the edge and down the waterfall, in the same way that it pulls space and time over the event horizon and into the black hole. Just like a fish exists in water, everything exists in space-time, and that includes light. So a little light ray falling over the event horizon of a black hole is never going to be able to come back out. The only way to escape is to defy gravity. For water to travel back up the waterfall, or light to escape from a black hole, it would have to travel fast enough to overcome the pull of gravity. And the stronger the gravity, the faster the object needs to travel. To escape the Earth's gravity, a rocket must travel at seven miles per second. From our far more massive sun, the escape velocity soars to around 384 miles per second. Black holes have gravitational fields that are so much stronger than that. In fact, rather than the speed of a rocket to escape, even if you go the speed of light, you'll never get off. In the few remaining seconds before the probe tumbles into the abyss, the pull of gravity and its distortion of space-time goes off the scale. Suppose I have a clock, and the probe has a clock, and I can observe the probe's clock and my clock. As the probe gets nearer and nearer the event horizon of the black hole, I will observe the probe's clock actually stop. Right at the event horizon, time basically grinds to a complete halt. So if I were sitting on the event horizon of a black hole, or almost on it, and you looked at me, I would just seem frozen to you. You never actually observe an object falling into the event horizon from the outside, because it will take longer than the age of the universe for us to watch the object disappear. The black hole's extreme gravity distorts space, time, and light. As you fell into a black hole, people would see you being redshifted. They would see light coming from you losing energy because it has to climb out of this incredible well of gravity to get out of the black hole. We experience the same phenomenon with sound. When a fire truck speeds towards us, the sound waves compress. Racing away, they stretch out. Like sound, light travels in waves. But instead of changing pitch, light waves change color. Climbing out of the black hole's gravity, light waves stretch, lose energy, and turn red. That's why black holes in some sense sound like the stuff of science fiction. But the real universe is stranger than science fiction. That's what's so wonderful. And what's even more wonderful is we don't know exactly what happens at the event horizon of a black hole. Einstein's theory of general relativity predicts the probe will simply glide through the event horizon. So this probe, if it's going past the event horizon, there's not gonna be a signpost there that says, welcome to the event horizon. It won't notice anything different. You just cross this boundary, and then suddenly you're cut off from the universe, never to return again. That's pretty wild. But according to a radical new theory, our probe's descent into the abyss won't be a gentle freefall. It'll be a baptism by fire in the ultimate cosmic firewall. So a computer firewall is simply supposed to be an impenetrable barrier. 
whereas the black hole firewall is literally a wall of fire. And that means that it's not innocent near the event horizon. It's not just empty space with a few soft photons that you can barely notice. Rather, there's this hugely dense radiation bath of photons. This new theory turns the event horizon into the most dangerous place in the universe. Incinerating anything that touches it in an inferno of infinite energy. There is no doubt that there is a place in space, the event horizon, the place from which nothing gets out. But the million dollar question is what actually happens there if you jump in. Some people think that nothing special happens there, and other people think that you actually get burned up by this, this firewall. And what's so embarrassing about this is if you actually want to find out and decide to jump into a black hole, you will learn, but you can't tell anybody else. Up close, this is what our probe should see in the final moments before it enters the abyss. If there is a firewall lurking behind this black veil, our journey ends here. If not, the probe simply glides across the point of no return. Everything that falls into a black hole disappears. And if it never gets out, the question is, where does it go? Gravity here is so intense, it accelerates space beyond the speed of light. At this speed, the eight million mile journey to the black hole center will take less than 40 seconds. If the probe survives that long. Now imagine that I'm falling into a black hole. The strength of gravity is gonna be different if I'm going in feet first because of the extreme curvature of space time there. And because of that, my feet will have a stronger pull and you'll get stretched into a form that's reminiscent of spaghetti. So we call it spaghettification. Spaghettification is real. We saw it happen when Jupiter's gravity spaghettified comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 into a chain of fragments in 1994. In reality, our probe would be ripped to shreds before it reached the black hole's center. I mean, of course I could flex and hold myself together anyway, but you know, it's the laws of physics we're battling with here. <laughs> Let's suspend those laws and let our probe continue. It's halfway to the black hole's center. From this vantage point, the probe sees everything that's fallen in before it. If you were talking about the exact mathematical horizon, you would see the entire past of the universe go by. You would see back to the beginning of the formation of the black hole. According to Einstein's equations, the black hole is a colossal cosmic museum. All the light that's fallen in since the black hole's formation is still here sped up and stacked in layers. As the probe plunges deeper, the battle between gravity and spin resumes and intensifies. The centrifugal force gets relatively stronger deeper inside the black hole, and that centrifugal force slows down the flow of space. And the place where it slows back down to the speed of light is called the inner horizon. And all kinds of crazy things happen at the inner horizon. In this chaotic cosmic blender, matter gets spun around and flung back past the probe. If I actually jump into a, a big black hole, just like if I fell down the waterfall, you're gonna be perfectly alive and well while you're on the way down. Problems only come when you reach what corresponds to the inner horizon at the base, where other water and rocks and things come at you. Deep inside the black hole, the probe 
hits the inner horizon. The inner horizons of rotating black holes are the most violent places in our universe. Wildly energetic particles slam into the probe at near light speed. The black hole is an amazing kind of particle accelerator at the inner horizon. Particles spewing in all directions, being accelerated through each other. They collide together, they produce enormous concentrations of energy, which vastly exceed any energy in any terrestrial particle accelerator. These collisions have the power to unleash the most violent events in the universe. If there is any place in our universe where our universe is making baby universes, where our universe is reproducing, I can guarantee to you that that place is the inner horizons of black holes, because that is the place where the energies that are needed to make a Big Bang, they are produced there. 